Welcome to Fayetteville Community Church. We welcome our church family and our visiting friends. Thank you for coming to worship with us. To find out more about our church, upcoming events, and other church activities, you may visit us online at www.fccnc.us. I had been since the middle of September, seems like months ago now, which it was, I had been doing a series called Broken and Whole. And in that series, we talked about confessing our brokenness and finding our place where if when we, when we confess our brokenness, that that's the point that God can make us whole. But I thought in the month of December, I'm going to kind of break away from that a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit more theme, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, some things over the next few weeks that I feel like that we need to hear. So this morning, this being Thanksgiving week, how many of you had a good Thanksgiving? How many had a great Thanksgiving? How, okay, how many of y'all had as much food left as you ate? Amen, we did too. We could have fed a half a, a, that many people again in our house. And there's still stuff in our refrigerator. If y'all want to stop by, y'all come on by the house, take whatever you want home, collards. We got all, all that stuff. It's a little gross by now, but we're doing science experiments with some of it in the, in the refrigerator as we speak. Come by the house. We'll let you take some home. But I thought about this week, Thanksgiving. And I thought about this scripture that comes from Psalm 100, and I, want, I would love for you to look at the screens, and I want us to read this together. Can we do this? This comes out of the NIV, so I want you to read it with me this morning. Just look at the screens and read with me. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord God is good. It, the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Can everybody say amen? Amen. 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 When I was a kid, 99% uh, of the times that we sang in church, we sang songs right out of the Bible. And this was one. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Remember, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays. I love the food. I love the endless football games. Go Tar Heels. I love the, the pause, though. I love the, the minutes that we spend just for a few minutes in thankfulness. And at our, at our house, we have a, um, our, our bar in our kitchen is the gathering place. And I, I told you this before, we, we all gather around that one place. And what we did right before, the, right before we eat is we kind of go around the, the, the room and let everybody say what they're thankful for. Well, Banks, my, my grandson, who's our youngest grandson, Banks was there and came to Banks, and Banks said, I'm thankful for my family, and thankful for my friends, thankful for my mom and daddy. And then it kept, kept going all the way around, and it was about, the room was about finished, and Banks said, I got another one. I said, what you got, Banks? He said, I'm thankful for God. Yes, that's what we all did. Oh. Psalm 100, giving thanks. Giving thanks. You know, the one, thing, one of the things I love about this psalm is from the time at, at 1035 when we sang our first song until right now, we've been doing that. We've been doing that. We've been giving thanks. We've been singing songs. The psalm 100, it was actually a song that David wrote. I, I, I love the way that, that we apply this in our worship. Now, I haven't heard many shouts of joy this morning. I hadn't anybody give a big old woo or a big old LG. Loving God? Loving God. So we've covered most of them. Psalm 100, verse 2 says, Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. And in verse 4, it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart. Here's a couple things. We should enter 
into thanksgiving every single day because of this first thing. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth, and not just Israel, but the whole earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God and it is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The first thing is we need to be thankful just because he is God, because the Lord is God. I said this last week when we were talking about love not being easily angered. There's two important facts to get in life. One is God is God and the other is I am not. God is God, and I am not. David said, know that the Lord is God. Know it down deep in your soul. Be convinced of it. Know it without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord is God. Now, when the Bible has the word Lord, L-O-R-D, in all caps, it stands for something. It means something. In this particular verse, he's talking about Yahweh, that Yahweh is God. Not just any God, but the God of the Bible. He's the God that revealed himself to Abraham and Isaac and to Jacob. He's the one that rescued Israel from Egypt. He's the God of Joshua. He's the God of David. He's the God of Solomon. He's the God who of the uh, God of the all powerful, the all knowing, the all wise, the all present, the all holy. The God who has revealed himself in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Lord of all of your victories. He's the Lord of all of your defeats. He's the Lord of all of your struggles. He's the Lord of every area of your life. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He's full of truth. He's not Allah. Uh, Allah. He's not Krishna. He's not Buddha. He's not some generic God on the shelf. But he is Yahweh, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. How Hallelujah. You can do better than that. That is good preaching. You need to know that the Lord is God. He alone is worthy to receive glory, glory and honor. Glory and honor and praise. One of the most fund fundamental reasons for thanksgiving is not the blessings that we've been given, but it's to stop and not just worship the blessings, but worship the blesser. Worship the blesser and not the blessings. He said, seek ye first, what? The kingdom and whose righteousness? His righteousness. And then how much? All of these things will be added unto you. It's God himself. We worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul wrote in the book of Romans in the first chapter, he said, the root of all sin is a failure to thank God for being God. Let me say that again. Paul said the root of all sin is failure to thank God for just being God. It's what he said, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God or gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish, foolish hearts were darkened. They began to put themselves in a place where they thought they had it all together. Adam and Eve, if we look all the way back at the beginning of, beginning of creation, they weren't thankful that the Lord was God because they began to want to be like God, right? And what a mess did it get us in. Some of you had too much turkey this week. You're in a turkey coma. Aren't we thankful that the Lord is God? The, ne the next phrase in Psalm 100 verse 3 says, It is he who made us and we are his. God made us. God made us. I don't care what it says in your science class in college. The King of kings and the Lord of lords said, be, and there was. He said, light, be, oceans, be, moon, stars, heaven, be. The Bible says he took the dust of the earth and he made man. Then he told Adam, he said, Adam, I'm going to make you a helpmate. She's going to do anything that you ever wanted to do. She's going to agree with everything that you've ever said. She's going to stand beside you no matter how stupid you look. She's going to be with you every step of the way. She's going to cook three meals a day every day for the rest of your life. 
And Adam said, God, what's it going to cost me? He said, an arm and a leg. He said, what can I get for a rib? But God alone made us. And he said we were made in his image. The coolest thing in the world to me is that the creator of the universe made me to hang out with him. He said, I've made you so that you and I can become one and we can commune together. God, the creator of the universe, the Lord of the heavens, wants to hang out with you, Les. I love that, that he loves me that much. We're not a product of somebody else's creativity. God himself made us, and because he made us, he wants to own us and allow us to live and breathe and move and have our being in him. That's a humbling reminder this morning that the God of the universe wants me, you, Mike. We aren't our own and that we aren't God. The Lord is God and we should be thankful. Man, what a mess I would make if I was in charge of all creation. Think about it. Think about it. I can promise you there wouldn't be many days that the sky just wasn't blue. But what would that do to our ecosystem? The flowers need to rain. Rain's going to come. But the promise of that sunshine is the reason that we live and breathe. I'm telling you, all of us think we can be armchair quarterbacks for God, but we can't. You know, what was God thinking when he brought Hurricane Matthew or Hurricane Florence or the wildfires that come in California? What are you thinking, God? Or any natural disaster that we see. I can tell you this, if I was God, I would sure run a different play than that one. But he's God, he alone. Know that the Lord is God and he's the one that made us and we are his. And he doesn't think like us. Somebody look at the person beside of me and say, thank the Lord he don't think like me sometimes. Psalm 100, look, if you go on down in that verse, he said, we need to begin to think of ourselves as sheep. As sheep. Have any of you ever dealt with sheep? They ain't the smartest in all the barnyard. And I think that's probably why he said that all of us like sheep have gone what? Astray. The most famous thing about sheep is they're just kind of dumb. And they're really, really needy. They're really needy. That's not a very impressive picture of myself. But we are a lot of times foolish, needy people. But because we are, the great thing about being that right there is if we're sheep and we're needy, we need a shepherd. We need a shepherd. We're a dependent people. We're a needy people. Jehovah Rapha, we need you. We should be thankful that the Lord is God and the Lord is our shepherd. I shall not what? He maketh me to lie down and he restoreth my soul. He restores my soul. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me how long? All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, forever. The only people that can truly thank God is the people that know him as their shepherd, as their shepherd. And that's only possible through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. I quoted it a second ago, but Isaiah 50, 53, 6 says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on Jesus Christ the iniquity of us all. The cross was just Jesus gathering his flock back. It was just him gathering his flock. And you and I can be a part of his flock by turning from our sins, putting our trust in him, him alone, and what he did on the cross. Can you say amen? amen? It's so simple a child can do it. And a couple of weeks ago in our baptism, we saw some children that said, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord 
of my life. I want you to be the Savior of my life. I want you, I want you to be the Savior of my soul. And now, they're sheep. They're part of God's flock. They have a place that he said, I'm going to go and prepare for you. So number one, we need to enter his gates with thanksgiving because the Lord is God. And then number two, because he's good. Because the Lord is good. Can you say that with me? The Lord is good. Look at verses four and five in that chapter. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. And his love, his mercy endures forever. His faithfulness continues through how many? All generations. The Lord is not just God. He is good. Look at somebody and say, God is good. God is good all the time. I love what the message says when the message says that verse. It says this. I love this. Enter with the password, thank you. How many of you have more than one password? How many of you just got that one go-to and it's on everything that you, yep. Yeah. But this says, enter with the password, thank you. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home. Talk in praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and forever. That preaches to me. That when I come in and begin to just say, Lord, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord. For giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. We enter his gates. We enter with the password. Thank you. Thank you. He loves us. He loves us. The verse says he's loyal forever, always and forever. He's the good shepherd. He continues through all generations. He was loving and faithful to our grandparents. He was loving and faithful to our parents. And now he's going to be loving and faithful to my children and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and their grandchildren. And I hope we're all gone by then. I'm just telling you. I, I hope that we all make it. And the way that it is, is they trust in his promises. They trust in the promises of God. His mercies endure to all generations. God always keeps his promises. Can you say amen? amen. And he promises that he'll be forever good. Even when it doesn't seem like that good things are happening. We need to be thankful even when things are going the wrong way. But I'm telling you, sometimes life hurts. But we know that in those times that the Lord is God and we know that he is good and loving and faithful and we can trust him and even thank him. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. There's a guy named Roy Campanella. He was one of the first African Americans to play in the U.S. baseball major leagues. And in his distinguished career, he won the Brooklyn Dodgers' most valuable player, I don't know how many times. And in 1955, he was with the team that won the World Series. But in January of 1958, his career was cut short because of a crash, and it left him a quadriplegic. After he was injured, he spent a lot of time in the Institute of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation in New York City. And one day, he stopped as he was coming in and he read a gold plaque that was on the walls for someone who had been blessed with such athletic gifts, it resonated deeply within him. And look what this said. He read this. He said, I asked God for strength that I might achieve and I was made weak that I might learn to humbly obey. I asked for health that I might do great things, but I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy and I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of others. And I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. 
I asked for all things that I might enjoy life, and I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing I asked for, but everything I hoped for, and almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among men most richly blessed. Can you say amen? amen. All the circumstances. God is sovereign over all of them. And he'll work out all, all things for your good according to Romans 8, 28. We don't always understand, but the Lord is God and God is good. But we can trust him. This year probably has been one of the most difficult in my entire life. All the circumstances of this year from the beginning of the year until today. Losing my dad this year. Losing the rock, the patriarch of our family. It's been hard, but I know this. That the Lord God is good and his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues to my generation and to your generation. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 We can trust him. We can enter his gates with a thank you and enter his courts with a praise of uplifted hands because he's good. If nothing else this Thanksgiving, we can be thankful because he's good and he is God. Worship him with gladness. Come before him with songs. Know that he is good. It was him who made us. We are his. We are his people. We are his sheep. Enter his gates with a thank you. His courts with praise. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. I want you to encourage somebody around you today that God is good. Because I can promise you when we do that, the enemy has to flee. He don't like to stay where people are worshiping the Lord. I want to read you something this morning. This morning we were in prayer. And... I hate to say this, but one of my favorite songs that I've ever heard was Charlie Daniels, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. But there's a line in that song that says, give the devil his due. I bet a fiddle of gold to get your soul because I think I'm better than you. But this morning, when we were praying, I thought this, give the devil his due. And when you worship, the enemy can't stay around. But I wrote this down this morning. Yep. You're right, devil. On my own, I will never make it. But I'm not on my own. I have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And Jesus said he would never leave me or forsake me. He said he would be with me, be with me to the end of the age. So I am going to make it through this trial with him by my side. So I want to give the devil his due today and let him know I'm going to make it. He's already said that I would. I'll keep on trusting. Cause he's working everything for my good. He walks beside me. And heaven is in my view. Oh, I'm gonna make it. Through. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? Lord, we confess that today. We confess that today, Lord, that you are a good God. And that we're going to make it. We're going to make it. And as we're making it, we are entering into your courts with thanksgiving and praise. That the password that we come in here with even today, Lord, was thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So today, Father, we thank you that we are victors in this house because of your goodness and because you are our God, that you are our good, good shepherd. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that we know, we know that we are overcomers in the name of Jesus. Lord, for everyone that spent time at the altar this morning praying for either themselves as a prodigal or praying for their prodigal son or daughter. Lord, I ask you that as we leave this place today, you would be the glory and the lifter of our heads, that we have seen a miracle in this house even today. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. 
We thank you for this, this season that we're going into, this month of December, where the entire world pauses. So today, Lord, we stop. We enter your gates with thanksgiving. We enter your courts with praise. And we say, today is the day that you have made, Lord. I will rejoice and be made glad. Will you say that with me? Say, I will rejoice and be made glad. Will you stand up with me and say that again? Say, I will rejoice and be made glad. Now look at somebody and say, LG, LEO, loving God, loving each other. God bless you. See you this week.